Hello. Right, so in my last video, we went and got a whole bunch of different gear that we we're going to play with. And at this point, me and Jonathan are going to build, this was the Node MCU or ESP8266 robot. And we're going to put it together and try and make it work in this video. So what have we got? We got we did the wheel. Yeah. The controller. The controller. Okay. And so, what does the controller do, John? Drives the robot. That's it. And on this controller, we've got an ESP8266 or Node MCU controller. And John, you're going to program this with something a bit like Scratch. Okay. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah. The chassis. Chassis. Yes. This is where the, we're going to build the robot on That's this. Not a word. <laughs> it is a word indeed. Okay, and here we've got lots of screws and cables. And we'll use those later. First thing with the chassis is we need to take the backing off. There we go. Do you want to pull that all the way off, John? And guess what? Now you've done one side, we've got to do the other side. Not again. <laughs> what do you think this box is for, John? Um... You got it. Right, now we're going to get into this bag. So we've got some more laser cut parts here, John, and also a switch. This one's too hard. And we might be able to crimp those. Oh, what? This, this one. You prefer that one? Yeah, okay, one. well, we'll stick with that one then. These are encoder wheels. We can use it with a sensor to know how far the robot has gone. And look, they've got more backing on them. So these are in a different plastic. These are in a black plastic. Now, that's because... They work by cutting out light, John. Okay, so these look like they're clips to hold the motors in, and we'll see how we use those in a minute. Why there's so many? <laughs> so we've got this, which is a caster wheel, and it moves like that, and we're going to put that onto the robot. Do you know what these are, John? The motors. Should we start with the wheels? Well, the wheels actually have to go onto the motors, so... So I was disappointed during my initial video opening this up that these motors needed solder on the solder tags. But one of my viewers suggested last week that actually I might be able to just crimp the, uh, the cables on with a pair of pliers. So we're going to attempt that this week and see if that's stable enough. And maybe if it's not, I can go over later with a dab of solder to hold it more permanently. Pushing the cable, threading it through these tiny little eyes here. Then what I'm going to try and do is use these which are kind of long nose pliers we're going to twist this cable over okay and then i'm going to basically crimp it down hard okay we'll do the same on the other side so i'm going to put a pre-bend in here which might make it a bit easier john you were looking at these instructions what have you figured out they're showing these as going in here you want to put the other one in there And then I'll do them. So these ones just go out here, which we'll we'll put the I suspect we'll put the motor in and crimp those in later. So that one final one goes over there. Let's go put the encoder wheels on the motors. John John, pick up an it there's an encoder wheel. Now oh see that cable's come off. I'll sort that out again later. Well, I do so this. it goes on one side of the motor. There's the smooth side. Okay. So here the encoder wheel, John, can you see the shape of the encoder wheel matches the shape of this axis? You see this axis? Right, that's it. You've got it lined up. Okay, but that's fine. It looks like the best way to play this. Uh, can I put this? Let's play it this way. Now, we need to start screwing the motors in. Let's see, what have we got? We want these long screws for that. Okay, this is where you're going to start using the screwdriver. One. Yeah. Well, no, they're not the smallest. They're 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 long ones. So we push this one into here, and then we can see holes on the motor where the screws need to go. So push. 
push the screws through the holes. So give me another screw, push the screw through the holes. It should go all the way through and out the other side. So can you do the same on this motor like I did there? So look, you put this plate on the outside and push the screws through. That's it. Now push that screw all the way through to the other side. Good. And the second screw. Now we're going to get some of these nuts on. Let me show you how this works. So I pick up a nut and I place a finger to it. Now the other side. Yeah. So these cables are soldered on, these motors are screwed back in, so we can go and assemble the rest of the robot. Okay, so the batteries, I think, go up here somewhere, John. Can you drop one of these screws? How many? Well, there are two holes and two screws. These spacers are actually for the caster. Right, so what we've got, we've got two screws. Here is a standoff and here is a screw. Push the screw through here. And look, we tighten the standoff down onto the screw like that. Let me do this bit because it's going to be tricky. Can I try to turn this balance? It can't balance there. But when it's on the robot, it will balance a bit. Here we go. I'll tighten one. The last bit to do... It's the wheel! Yeah, and then we'll put the, the controller on afterwards. Right. These yellow wheels! So, the wheels go onto these axles, John. Okay. Okay. So, now since I'm not going to use that power switch, I can use that port as a cable port no. to tuck these motors through. Now can you turn it over? So, I've now screwed all the cables into the microcontroller. Not a bad little kit, and it's relatively cheap. Uh, it'd be nice to find out if there's a name for this motorboard, because I really like this motorboard. Uh, we'll take up programming this in the next video. Um, now, the only thing is it's come together quite nicely, but the controller is flapping the breeze, so I'm going to get some sticky stuff to put between the controller and the chassis. And we're going to use a scratch-like programming environment that I've been putting together that generates Lua for this. John has helped me put this together and maybe understands a little bit more about building a robot. So if you come back next week, we'll have this moving and have it programming and doing stuff. So if you've enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos, I've got plenty of videos already made and coming up about robots and about the Node MCU, the ESP8266, uh, then please hit the subscribe button and uh, share this with your friends. If you've got someone who else who's a, a bit of a uh, robot geek or electronics geek, I'm sure they'll find this stuff fun. And uh, I'll see you next time. Good night. Bye.